All right, I want to show off my new vector network analyzer. Um, I've done a series of videos uh, before this one, if you haven't watched them, on how I was able to get a, a vector network analyzer for $10, especially a Hewlett Packard one. <laughs> so uh, here it is, I've moved it into my rack. Uh, this is my 8921 uh, uh, radio test set, and this is my new uh, 8712C vector network analyzer, all right? It started out life as an 8711C, uh, which was a scalar network analyzer. I hacked it. Uh, I'll link some videos below on how to hack this thing. I hacked it into a, into a VNA. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's turn it on and take a look. It's a, a 68030 processor with a 6882 coprocessor, and it's got some uh, uh, DSP stuff and everything in it. So it passes its uh, boot ROM. It goes and checks the uh, floppy disk for any type of installs or anything. It goes and looks at stuff, and then it comes up, initializing. It does some correction calculations, and it comes up. It says it's an 8712C. Uh, yeah, 1997. Good days. And uh, it, uh, it has some things installed. It has iBasic installed. It has a LAN network installed. It has the attenuator. Uh, SRL short resistant low. I don't know what SRL is, and fault location. Uh, maybe it'll find shorts, we'll find resistances, and we'll find, I don't know, who knows? I don't know what that one is. It is a 75 ohm unit, so I have converted this into a 50 ohm unit. Uh, again, there's some videos before this one that shows me how to, how to convert a 75 ohm unit into a 50 ohm unit. But uh, yeah, let's see how it works. Um, so it has normal uh, a cal. Um, I'll just show you a, uh, the after cal. We'll do a cal, but I'll show you kind of the after cal. So, uh, yeah, you get a Smith chart. It is a VNA. And I have a, uh, an open here, and it's over there. Let me turn it, put on the short. It should appear over on the other side. There we go. There's the short. And if I put on the load, it should be right smack in the middle, 50 ohms. And it is 50 ohms. So I said, well, how does it work 50 ohms if it's a 75 ohm uh, system? Um, well, if you go into Cal and you do more Cal, you can say Smith uh, Z0. You can set the center frequency of your uh, of your VNA. Okay, so good VNAs have this, um, where you can just say, ah, I want 60 ohms in the center. Then you Cal it to 60 ohms, and it does 60 ohms. So uh, right now it's set to uh, set to 50 ohms, and our load is measuring uh, right there in the center at 50 ohms. So uh, yeah, it's working really, really good. Uh, let's go ahead and show you a calibration. Um, well, let me talk about it a little bit first. So first of all, uh, the uh, frequencies, uh, you can do a start frequency of, uh, uh, let's say, zero point, uh, 300 kilohertz is as low as it goes, and we'll do a uh, stop frequency of uh, 2 gigahertz, and it, it's 1.3. So it goes from 0.3 to 1.3. Uh, 0.3 megahertz to 1.3 gigahertz. So that's that's its range. All right. We can set the power levels uh, because it has a stepped attenuator. We can set the power levels to anything we want. Uh, it's set to minus 10 dBm right now. So that's what it's being uh, output on the uh, reflection port. Um, we can choose how many points we want across the screen. So number of points. Right now it's set to 801. You can set that anywhere from 50 to 1600. So I have it set on 800 just to be a little bit better than, than other things I have. Um, so yeah, so let's do a calibration. Um, so we'll do calibration. We'll do one port. It says connect the open. Uh, so I'm going to calibrate it at the end of this cable. Uh, put in my open. Oh, come on. Go in. There we go. And make sure that. Uh, we'll do a reflection, connect short, put the short on. Yes, I should be using a wrench, but I'm cranking down on it pretty hard with my fingers. And we'll do a load.
And you can see the calibrating is very, very quick. It calculates everything and it gives us a, uh, gives us a point there right in the center. So it's calibrated very, very nice. If we just open it up, you see that there's a little bit of air over there. That's because there's a little bit of extra length on the open here. So if we stick in the open, oh man, there's a little bit extra there. Ah, cow, more cow. Okay, so I've made a mistake. So um, the first time I did this, I did the same mistake and I did it again. So I got to remember, I've got to remember. Um, there is a default cal set that's an end connector cal set that, that it knows what all of the electrical links are and everything in the system. And it's going to give you a bad cal if you, if you use the default cal kit. Okay, so how did it get to there? I'm here in the calibration menu and you go to cal kit and it says default cal kit. Do not use the default cal kit. You will have this error. Say just type in, which is just a generic thing. If you go to the generic thing, Okay, and then go back to calibrate. Okay, let's calibrate with the generic thing. Let's calibrate with the short. No, open, we want to do open first. And then we'll do the short. And we'll do the load. And now we're calibrated. So let's go back and look at that open again. And you can see that now it's measuring very well. And if we go measure the short, um, had we used the other, had we looked at the short and the other one, it would have given us an error over here too. We'll go to the short and you can see that we're measuring very, very well. So now we're perfectly calibrated. So that's the trick. If you do get one of these things, um, make sure that you go into the cal kit uh, cal kit and choose type N. I haven't tried try type F yet, but do type N and everything's fine. Do not use default. <laughs> do not use default. Okay. Um, so what can we do? Well, we can take a look at some things. Okay, so I'm going to be using uh, my uh, VNA demo board. This is my, S uh, my SMA version. Um, let's go over here to 33 ohms. This is just a 33 ohm resistor to ground. And if it's calibrated correctly, it should measure 33 ohms. And I think you can see it there. And you can read it off here, it's 33.63 ohms. Um, so yes, it is calibrated. It does know everything. Even though it's a 75 ohm thing, if you calibrate it at 50, it knows everything, all right? And uh, we can do things like uh, uh, fun stuff. I think this is a fun one. Yeah, this is a uh, uh, this is a capacitor in series with a inductor in parallel with a resistor. <laughs> Gives us a nice circle on the on the Smith chart, and uh, we can do some other fun ones. What is this one? Yeah, this is a cool one. This is a um, capacitor. Let's see, it's, it's a um, capacitor in series with an inductor and resistor that are both in parallel. <laughs> and it gives you this, this cool curly Q. So anyway, uh, yeah, so it does all everything like this. Um, it also has measurement one, which I have set to reflection. It'll do S21. Um, you can go uh, do measurement two, and uh, you can do two different measurements, Smith on the top, and uh, right now we can set this to transmission, so it's S21 on the bottom. Um, let's see, what other things can you do with this? You, like I said, you can set, you can set frequency, start, stop, center, span, CW. I've tested CW; it's spot on with frequency. Uh, you can adjust the power level output. The power level output is within, within probably 0.4 dB, so not too bad. Um, I don't know how to call this thing yet. Um, you can set what power level you want to turn on at preset. Uh, you can set the sweep time, slow, fast. Um, you can set uh, some cool things. Let's see here. You can set how to trigger, number of points. I showed you that. Um, let's see. Where's the cool thing that I wanted to show? 
Um, is it in system? System config, no. Frequency. Let's see, I know it's in here somewhere. Frequency, power, menu, trigger, trigger, avoid spores. Um, averaging, oh yeah, it's in averaging. Okay, so you can set averaging, so you can set the averaging factor and down here is displayed the averaging factor for measurement one and the averaging factor for measurement two. So measurement two is having an average of 16, so it's averaging 16 sweeps. You can also go over here and click on system bandwidth and you can click on, uh, it's set to 33.7 uh, kilohertz right now, 3700 hertz. You can set it narrow to 250 hertz, so you can set it to really fine to 15 hertz. So if you want to sweep something uh, very, very accurately, you put it, you, you can watch it sweep. It takes a, it takes a very long time to sweep at uh, 15, 15 hertz resolution. But you can get, if you're sweeping like a saw filter and stuff, and you need really fine resolution, uh, you can do that uh, with these settings. So that's very, very cool. And um, yeah, what else can I, can I just say? It's a vector network analyzer. It's very, very cool. Uh, I guess we can do a, um, I guess we can do a transmission measurement. So let's, let's hook up a filter here. Let's see, there is a 4.433 megahertz filter on this board. We can hook that up. Yeah, you can see it's looking like a filter. Uh, we can do marker functions, go to center, and then we can do frequency span, and it's set to something crazy. So let's go to 400 megahertz. Oops, 400 megahertz. There we go. And let's go to 100 megahertz. There we go, there's our filter. Uh, should look familiar, I've swept this filter out on other videos and stuff too. So yeah, it's supposed to look just like that. Uh, it does have all the cool marker functions. Um, super, super responsive, super, super zoomy. Um, it's, it's a real luxury. Uh, having used uh, uh, other vector, vector net analyzers, this one's faster than other ones that I've used. And uh, certainly much, much faster than a nano VNA. Um, but uh, yeah, it, uh, it's very cool. So quick look at my 87, I'm gonna to have to change the label here. It's an 8712C now. Um, I don't know if that product was ever released. I think the problem was with they made a really good one, but it was too cheap and they didn't want to undercut sales of their 8753, I think it is. They're cool, they're, they're flagship uh, VNA. So I don't think they ever released this one. Um, I don't think it was for poor performance. I think it was for, uh, probably for price reasons, if I had to guess. Um, but yeah, it's very, very cool.